Welcome to the Xenomorphic Possibilities Podcast, episode number seven, Prometheus, the spoiler edition. Welcome to this podcast. Uh, This is episode number seven, as I just said, and this podcast will go over uh, some of the details in Prometheus and some of my thoughts about the details and just some, uh, you know, just general thoughts after my second viewing of Prometheus. Uh, So I did a previous video about 10 minutes in length where I have a spoiler free video. If you've not yet seen Prometheus, I would recommend you watch that video rather than this one. Go watch Prometheus before watching the rest of this video. I do not want to ruin this movie for you. So that is my forewarning to you. So with that said, let's get into the meat and potatoes of Prometheus. The first thing, since this is the Xenomorphic Possibilities Podcast, I wanted to just attack the question of xenomorphs. Are xenomorphs in this movie? And the answer is, quite frankly, yes, they are. So they're not... The, 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 the story of the Alien franchise, Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, was a story about Ripley and a story about the aliens themselves. This story of Prometheus is instead the story of the space jockey, the story of the engineer, the story of that being, that uh, new alien, so to speak. And... So that's the story of Prometheus. It's not about the alien. That's not the centerpiece of it. They are a part of this world, but it's uh, really a story about the the space jockey. So uh, who is that guy in Alien that just sitting on the chair? The what I thought was a gun, a you know a missile turret. That's what I thought the miss uh, that chair was a missile turret with a dead guy on it with a xenomorph that popped out of him so xenomorph so uh they're in here and they're in here twice to my knowledge you have a mural that you see when you get into the headroom the the worship room and it this is an interesting mural because what do you see depicted before you is a xenomorph that has his hands stretched out like he's being crucified you have imagery of what appears to be perhaps a queen alien behind that and in the lower right if you uh, really look at it you also have a face hugger at the bottom right so you have the life stages of the alien here and this is something that was it seems like it was here for a while so the alien found at the end of this film is not the first instance of the xenomorphs in this world. So get rid of that notion first off. Xenomorphs were here. They were perhaps a tool used by the engineers to wage war against a a competing uh, society or something like that. So that's something to note, that they knew about the xenomorphs, and they perhaps created them themselves or develop these things and they worship these things to some capacity so the head they seem to worship perhaps what they made have also worshiped these xenomorphs so the end the end of the movie you do see a xenomorph here and it's an interesting way this xenomorph comes to be uh the engineer the sole surviving engineer on this ship is implanted uh, from a giant squid face hugger uh, of the xenomorph. So you have the squid, which was birthed out of the black goo. Uh, the black goo, uh, I'm, I'm speculating here, is uh, a, a highly concentrated version of DNA that you would find in the egg. So my theory is they, these people, these engineers, found the eggs... And, you know, they found the eggs and they had an accident, right? That's where you have the the LV-426, the first alien. You have the accident of crash landing in LV-426 with the chest popped out of the engineer. So you had that accident. And they wanted to figure out, after that happened... That 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 pro- that ship's been there a long time. I'm imagining, and probably before this even started. So I'm imagining these black goo vases were designed to be safer to transport versions of eggs. So highly concentrated, you could do with one black jar, one black vase. What you could do with a whole room full of eggs. So one vase equates that of a whole room full of eggs, perhaps. And it was their intention to use these black vases to create xenomorphs. And 
it is my thought that in this world, human beings were created to be hosts to these xenomorphs. That the creation scene at the very beginning of this movie was done. Uh, we were created in this world to be used to create xenomorphs. That they would drop off these black uh, black uh, vases and we would be the hosts of tons of these different xenomorphs. And that is the reason for humans' existence. That we were created in a need for xenomorphs which in this world, the xenomorphs are uh, warriors for this breed, for these engineers. That these that, that they're able to transport these and wage war against a different uh, species using the xenomorph. So that's my prediction right there off the bat. And uh, beyond that is the idea that uh, the xenomorphs were perhaps you know, worship. They, they saw their power and they admired what they could do. And that's why I believe the, uh, at the end of the movie, you had the soul surviving engineer go kind of crazy and want to go back to earth to implant all these humans. Uh, another thought as far as the soul surviving engineer as to why he was there in the first place is I'm thinking he perhaps went a bit crazy, right? he perhaps uh, killed off the rest of his people there in that ship. That he wanted to kill off the human race with these xenomorphs. And perhaps everyone else second thought it and thought these people are not worth killing to create xenomorphs. Perhaps that was a thought. And that's perhaps why this guy was alone and kind of crazy uh he didn't seem mentally stable at the end of this movie and i think he is not the norm if you encounter a different engineer i don't believe they are fundamentally bad and want to hurt people so that is a thought as well uh beyond all that the creation of the xenomorph so you have this face hugger you have the black goo and that all creates a xenomorph so um Basically here, I, I noticed also that when the worm got the black goo, it turned into kind of the the implantation uh, part of the, the face hugger. So it was kind of a part of it, but not the whole thing. So you see in this movie lots of different aspects of the face hugger. And it's interesting to see in Alien how it boiled out of just eggs versus in this movie it's more of like an experimentation lab and then by the time alien is out you see mature a mature species that it doesn't seem like it was baked up in some science lab so there's more questions to be answered here as far as how this all went down uh and that's an intriguing question to ask i guess so i'm hoping we'll find out more about that in prometheus 2 uh moving on i had a question of I, I just wanted to share how awesome it was to be revealed what that chair was for in Alien. So in Alien, you see the space jockey, and he's on the chair, and it basically looks like a huge gun to me, or a male part of gen genitalia as well, as is Geiger's, Geiger's uh art art that it, it is you know but it was cool to see it actually function right it's actually the the pilot pilot chair and the whole notion of that being a mask that elephant mask was an interesting thing for sure i i personally would have loved to see an uh, elephant type of a creature but i appreciate their uh their intelligence and creating something more intelligent that that's a mask that is worn when you're flying things like that so i think that was a pretty cool part of this whole thing uh, another thing i wanted to just talk a little bit about is the whole lv planets so when when elizabeth shaw goes and discovers these this arrangement of planets